Hello everybody, welcome to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler and this is Naya Zoo, complete with blood braids, companies, everything you could want in a deck like this. Very excited uh, to play this one here. Now we'll see here, this hand was a little questionable. It's possible I should have mulliganed, um, but you know, depending on what our opponent has, uh, and we were on the draw, we in our deck's a bunch of you know low curve creatures. I think it was a reasonable keep. Our opponent just on double wooded foothills. I'm not sure what to read into that, but let's go ahead and fetch out a land here. Uh, looks like we probably can just get an overgrown tomb, I imagine. Let's see. No, we don't need that. We need white and red. Uh, sure, I guess we'll just get a sacred foundry here. Maybe a stomping ground. Stomping ground seems better. Okay, we don't want to pay the two life. Two drop, one drop, something we can play here. Would be nice. Uh, Path to Exile, not exactly what we were looking for. Let's see. I don't know what Double Wooded Foothills Pass from our opponent means. I Is it some sort of uh, Ponza deck? I, I would think they'd have a play early. Is it a Scape Shift Primeval Titan sort of deck? That's certainly a possibility. And they're willing to crack both the lands now. They actually got a basic force, huh? Okay. I not sure what that means. This turn should give away a little more information, and Thalia theoretically will be good. Let's see if we're getting Stone Rained, though. Yeah, we are. I actually messed up. I should have, uh... Should have not done anything on that turn. And now we have the choice of playing in the Cattle out, or... Yeah, I guess I have to do it. Um, I think I could have hedged since we weren't playing anything. I didn't need to fetch. Um, usually you want to, of course, because you you know, want, don't want to have to worry about paying life or whatever later. But um, you know, actually, I, I didn't need to fetch there. So our opponent does not have a fourth land, though, so that's pretty good for us. Um, so I, you know, this changes it a little bit. I am going to fetch because now we want to play Thalia. We don't actually have that many lands, so this could be kind of rough for us, actually. There's a Blood Braid, so if we don't get too wrecked... Yeah, I think I just hope that they don't have one. But if we don't get too wrecked on this turn, then we can Blood Braid. Basically, fingers crossed our opponent does not have another land on top of their deck. Fingers crossed. Yeah, alright. I mean, I don't really want them to Stone Rain us, but... Um, hopefully we get to play this Bloodbraid next turn. That would be very good. Now, Bloodbraid actually does not match up very well against Corsair Crucifix, uh, but we can use some of this removal to to take it out. Preferably, hopefully we're going to do it with Path, Path to Exile. I'm sorry, Lightning Bolt rather than Path to Exile. Our opponent could still have Land Destruction here. I mean, they have six cards at hand. It's got to be something. The Salia should be pretty good, though. All right, here we go. We'll see. It's a Nissa Voices into card. This card's really nice in these pawns at I like it a lot. Unfortunately, this token comes into play tapped, which means we get to uh, we get to hit this Nissa. I actually don't think I want to blood braid here. Um, well, man, eh, the thing is, if I don't blood braid, I'm definitely getting stone rained next turn. On the other hand, we need to attack Nyssa, and the Corsair is currently pretty good against my board, so I guess I just have to do this. Um, do we just path to make sure we kill it? Probably. I don't like doing this, but I don't want to get Stone Rain, so I don't want them to draw that card. I think we just have to take Nissa off the board while we can. And we still get to play this. We still get to make a play this turn, so. So it, it's, you know, we could end up not getting to um, to play Blood Braid next turn. On the other hand, we've taken Nissa off the board. Our opponent's uh, non basic lands come into play tap, so. You know, Monvuli Acid Moss is basically the, the breakpoint at four mana, or obviously their own Bloodbraid Elves. Um, but Bloodbraid Elf 
could be good against us. We'll see. We have a lot of uh, of powerful things on the board, though, so that is uh, that's good for us. Um, and we'll see what our opponent has here. This voice of resurgence is pretty good. It it jumps in the way of something, actually trades with a bloodbraid elf, uh, and then leaves behind a pretty big body after that. And even if we do have our own bloodbraid elf cut off by a land destruction spell here, uh, we'll have lightning bolt. We'll have pet exile. We should be able to beat down our opponent pretty decently. And of course, if we draw a land, we can cast it still, and hey, maybe we can path our own creature if we need to. All right, well, our opponent, <laughs> Rishkar, huh? Okay. Can't say I expected that. I guess it kind of makes sense with Anissa, though. I'd like to draw a land here. Did not, I drew Lightning Bolt. Hmm. Do I just run out the Blood Braid? Or do I bolt to keep them from having a bunch of mana next turn? I really don't want them to cast a... Uh... Actually, I only have one red here, so... They're going to have five no matter what. I don't want them to have Inferno Titan, though. That's what I'm worried about. <sighs> what to do, what to do. Inferno Titan's pretty good against us. It's not devastating, though. I think I just played the Blood Braid Elf here. Let's see what we hit. Get in the cattle. I mean, our opponent gets mana now, but hey, we're getting in damage. Um, eight damage, as a matter of fact. I mean, this lightning bolt isn't that far away from killing them. We still messed their lands up. So if they have, say, Inferno Titan, basically it, it takes out our it takes out one creature. I assume our Thalia, and then we it comes into play tapped, and then we. Uh, path the Rish... Well, they'd be tapped anyway. So, yeah, I think we're going to win this game. Um, playing Bloodbraid was definitely right there. I'm glad I, I got to the right play. Um, and Thalia's actually very good here because it makes it come into play tapped. And like I said in the intro, if you watch the deck intro, that's what our deck wants to do is turn things sideways. And I actually added this Thalia. It wasn't in the original list I found, but I love this card, and I think it's actually a very good fit. You know, there's some flex spots in the deck, right? You can shave... The trim the number of voices you can trade the you know the um the three drop spot whether you want kitchen finks or whether you want chrysali pride mages or selfless spirit or things like that i think there's definitely uh room to tailor some of those numbers the way you want them and i think that this is a, a very good three drop actually for the deck better than those other options and i it's not just a cute one of that i happen to like i think it's a deck that uh, a card that decks like this should be playing all right, so our opponent's deep in the tank here. Uh, I'm not sure what they want to do. This is not a very good position for them at all. Also, we have this Keswick Wolfram to give a creature Trample. That's a thing as well. This is, must have been a very awkward draw from our, our Ponza opponent here. Rush card is an interesting one. Um, it's not bad. Uh, it, it, it's not a bad thing to cascade into, I guess. Um, you know, Nissa is, is pretty good herself, and that's some, some nice synergy there. Make your team pretty big. All right, well, our opponent is considering their options, which I assume means they're dead, <laughs> basically. If someone takes two, three minutes when they have access to this bunch of mana, it's probably not a good sign. I right, hear they're going to spin the wheel on Bloodbraid. And this was pretty bad for them because Thalia doing work. Bloodbraid, Arbor Elf coming to play tapped, and that means you're dead. All right, we'll path the Rishkar. Wow, Thalia actually just took over this game, as a matter of fact. Bolt the bird. They always say to bolt the bird, and you don't usually do it on, like, turn eight or whatever, but, you know, do what you need to do. All right, to the sideboard here. I think we want Fiery Justice. Uh, neither Reckler is very good if we can get it down. Lyrian Souls is just okay, I think. Um, honestly, it gets pretty blown out by Inferno Titan. Uh, and it's not very good against Storm Breath Dragon either. I think Thalia is decent. Um, 
It's better on the play, though. On the draw, it's... Well, on the play, on the draw, it's fine, even, because it can stop their three mana. Um, the voices here are not as good. The pride mages are... Um, I guess our opponent will have, might have blood moons, so I would probably has blood moons. So I, we do want them, uh, and we want to fetch out basics as much as possible here. Noble Hierarch helps as well. I'm going to get rid of all the Lingering Souls. Um, okay, do we want any of the rest of this? Gaddic Teague, I don't think we want. Uh, most of their big payoff spells are creatures. Tracker is is certainly not a bad card. Um, we have a lot of three drops already, though, and I don't really want to cut any ones I have. I really like Rally or getting back lands. I like Fiery Judge just taking out their Arbor Elves and, and what have you. Maybe we only want one Fiery Justice here and we want a Tracker. Now, Domri is decent. I I don't think it's great, though. Well, it's certainly not bad, actually. It fights there. A lot of these cards are just better on the play. That's the issue than the draw here. Um, I could cut a company. Feels weird to cut company, right? But Domri doesn't exactly synergize well with Fall yet, but neither did the Fire Justice or the companies. I'll give this a shot. This is pretty haphazard, I'm aware. <laughs> Don't yell at me, I know. Maybe we should get the Kitchen Fix in there too. We have a lot of cards we like. That's sort of the issue here. Uh, I'm in for this hand, though. Voice on turn two. Um, we have a fetch land to protect against uh, land destruction shenanigans. Hopefully we draw another one. Uh, and we can run out Rally on turn three and get back a land. Which, against a deck playing Summer Rain, is pretty good. Our opponent considering the mulligan, I guess. Certainly not speed magic here. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's the way it goes sometimes. Our hand's pretty good. I mean, we we have all the pieces we want. We have the lightning bolt even. Uh, if they have an arbor elf or something we need to deal with. Our opponent did choose to keep. Of course, the Lightning Bolt means we would have to fetch it, open ourselves up to a um, land destruction spell. All right. Which could come as early as turn two, it turns out. Wow, okay. All right, well, I guess I... I mean, I'm certainly... There's no reason not to play mine of cattle. For what it's worth, I'm not entirely sure why we have an Overgrown Tomb in this deck. Um, I just got the, the list online that had 5 to League and made a couple small changes. I'm not sure the black black on the sideboard. Our opponent had nothing, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, given that they already have a target, um, gosh, just, I'm just going to make this a 2-2. Because I want to save this to fix whatever we need later. So yeah, I'm just going to get in there with a 2-2, I guess. Not exactly the way you see Wild Nagato played, but I think it's worth giving up one mana now to preserve the ability to fetch mana when we need it, and obviously the the rally or synergy with this. I think that's I think that's worth giving up an extra point of damage on turn t two here. All right, let's see if our opponent's going to lightning bolt something. That would be pretty bad for them, given that we have Voice of Resurgence in play. All right, they're just fetching. Well, this is where I would really like them to just play some random land destruction spell, and then we get to play Rally. Well, I guess we want to get to play Rally, or I guess that's the point here. <laughs> I don't want them to do that then. JK. All right, here we go. I mean, if they do spend their turn just blowing up one of our lands, we just get a... Oh, it's Anger of the Gods. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's a two-for-one for them. And they have something big coming next turn. Anger God's very good against our team, as it turns out. All right, well, let's go get a Sacred Foundry here. We have double green, so yeah, we want the white. Sacred Foundry. Hey, the life. And now we get a land back, though. Wow, and this is actually pretty sweet because we even get to play the Nacatl. 
I am going to play very fast and loose with my life total here. Um, obviously, as you can see, uh, the reason for that is that um, given that our opponent has land destruction, we need to have access to as many of our colors as possible so we don't randomly get cut off of white or cut off of red. Now, there are some pretty bad things our opponent could have here. They have five mana right now. Storm Breath is the worst because that was actually the one that would punish me the most, too, for, for you know playing so fast and loose with my life total, but... And here comes Blood Braid. All right, let's hope it's not too bad for us. Arbor Elf, not such a big deal. It does make a lot of mana with those those stomping ground Utopia Sprawls. Although our opponent actually messed up by putting them... Um, ooh, I like that one. Well, I say messed up. On the one hand, uh, they messed up on the because... Uh, if you put them both on one, then it makes more mana, obviously, with the Arbor Elf when you untap that land. However, it does play around Ghost Quarter. All right, so uh, I think our line here, though, is pretty clear. I think we want to bolt the Blood Braid. Attack. We are, our opponent's just going to get mana on this next turn, though. That's just how it's going to have to be. Um, all right, and we will now, whoa, almost conceded the game on accident. That would be bad. It's on there somewhere. Give me this thing. All right. <laughs> Play out a Knight of the Reliquary. Have Path to Exile up. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three Knight. Um, so if our opponent has Inferno Titan, that's the one I'm most scared of, um, we get a little punished because we don't have the option to blow up the Ghost Quarter and make it a 4-4, four, four. Uh, but we need to leave up Path to Exile, I think. Maybe that's wrong, though. Maybe that doesn't matter because we have enough mana on our next turn that we could path it in our main phase. It's not like it would have haste. The only haste creature that we would really need to worry about is a Stormbreath Dragon, and we're not pathing that anyways because protection from white. On the other hand, maybe it's a Tireless Tracker, and I do want to path it. Well, this is going to be close, I think. Our opponent has two cards in hand. We have one. Tireless Tracker's... Pretty good for them. Um, that said, if that was the best thing they had to do with this much mana, that's not really a great sign. And we are attacking for lethal next turn. So if I path the tracker here, um, well, let's see what else I have. Okay, well, this now they've tapped out a creature. This is five mana. Is this Storm Breath? Storm Breath is very good against us right now. I would have a line for killing it. It would involve attacking with the Wild Nakato, and when they, they block, I fetch out the Kessig Wolf run with Knight of the Royal Quarry and pump it enough to uh, to trade with the Storm Breath, um, since we can't path it. Opponent is thinking this line, this play through, though. And obviously that's not exactly... What is this? Oh, Primal Command. Uh-oh. Well, they gained seven lives, so they're not dead. And they get a creature revealed, put in their hand. Well, this is not great for us. That's an interesting one to have in their deck. It's not bad at all, though. All right, what did they reveal? And yeah, it is indeed an Inferno Titan. Oh, uh, and they're definitely going to get Investigate. This is all pretty bad for us. Um... Okay, well, and I think I have to path this thing in the end step. Inferno Titan is a blowout, but I think I have to path the trackers. I need to get as much damage in as possible here. It is going to be really rough because they have clues as well, but this does give us the opportunity to maybe hit a um, a, a Blood Braid or something here and, and still be able to Ghost Quarter. I want to be mana efficient. Something good? Not a bad draw. I can ghost quarter one of these. Leaves my opponent with... Hmm. I don't have any other land destructions, just the ghost quarters, so I can't even fetch it out. Let's see here. So my opponent's going to have one, two, 
three, four, five, six. They're gonna have a million mana next turn, whether I ghost quarter or not. I mean, I think I still need a ghost quarter, but. But I don't actually want to do it now. I want to do it in like their draw step. That way they have the maximum chance of drawing land and it doesn't give them mana to crack a clue on my end step. Um, the question is, what I do with this Knight of the Road? Do I just get in for nine? I think that's what we have to do. And then try to beat around the, uh, the Inferno Titan. You know, my opponent is that they are dead to, you know, another lightning bolt. So regardless of what happens here, we're going to have some outs, but. So if I were to bolt this thing, then they'd have one, two, three, four, five. No, if I bolt it, though, I lose my, my ability to, to actually kill them. Okay, so we'll let them draw for their turn here. This also makes our knight 4-4, uh, four, four, so our knight won't die to the Inferno Titan, um, which is good. We can actually have a creature larger than Inferno Titan at some point. I mean, our opponent still gets to sort of free roll a little bit because they get a crack. They get to use the Simon Grand to clock for crack a clue, um, but then it means all that they have. They have it means they probably have to use the Arbor Elf. Well, they don't. I guess have to use it. I mean, we're going to see what happens. This is going to be a close one. And obviously, we, regardless of what happens, we will have outs to win the game. And one of the other two lightning bolts does it. The four blood braids can hit a lightning bolt. That would do it, etc. So, um, there's still a lot of, uh, of opportunity for us to get there, even if things go not exactly the way we want them to here. So my opponent plays Inferno Titan, destroys our Nakatl. Um, on our turn, we attack with our Renegade Rallyer, and if they block, we bolt it. Guess that's the plan. Not a great plan. Here comes the Titan. I think we have another Path to Exile in the deck still. Um, Okay, let's see Inferno Titan. Yeah, we have some outs here. That's for sure. All right, yep, yeah, there goes our Nakato, as expected. Wow, okay, they're tapping their Arbor Elf. That's a mistake, unless they have something to do here. But even, it has to be another creature. Land Destruction does... Land Destruction loses in the game. Blood Moon loses in the game. Wow. Okay, we did it. Woo! That was that was unnecessarily greedy, I think, of our opponent. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right thing to say. It cuts, it cuts us off of a lot of things on the... Like, for instance, that Blood Braid that would have obviously punished them. Um, on the other hand, though, it's uh, losing a pretty crucial blocker here. But I guess it would have it wouldn't have mattered in this case if they blood braid or not because or, or rather if they blood moon or not because we we blood braid them. All right, we got there. Ponza, skin of our teeth, took it down. That was a great match. Thank you for watching, everybody.